Hi everyone, it's Scott and Amy and Hello. Zoe just walked in. <laughs> she wanted to come see what we're doing, but we're we're back live from the greenhouse this week and uh we're talking a little bit about pest control. So it's something we take very, very seriously. And uh when you have greenhouses, you have to keep a handle on not having unwanted pests in the greenhouses. So that's, that's something you know, is, is that something that, that affects you? Yeah, of course. If you're putting flowers outside, it's, it's something that you really need to be watching and, and keeping control of. And the best way is prevention. Uh, you don't want to be in a, um, a bad situation and try to get out of it. That's, I, I've done it. We've learned. Early on, yep. we, we were just, you know, we're, we were newbies 17 years ago and we were real naive and we learned the hard way. And we're and not talking about pests like, like Zoe's being a little <laughs> bit of a pest right now. Yeah. Uh, we're talking, you know, we're not talking about animals. We're talking about the little fungus gnats and the little bugs. Yep. Yep. The, uh, the bugs that we don't want to have uh, in the greenhouses or feeding on our flowers. And we're not talking about the pollinators. I know a lot of you are very passionate about that and that's great. Uh, we're, we're not attacking the pollinators, but uh, a greenhouse, we have to keep control and, and make sure that we don't have an outbreak of the bad bugs like the aphids, the, the white fly, the thrips. Uh, those, are the, those are the bad ones. If you got aphids, you got problems. And we've been there, done that. Don't ever want to do it again. Yeah. Let's uh, talk about this weekend. St. Patrick's Day was around. Yeah, we had St. Patrick's Day and a little funny story. So do you, do you guys do anything for St. Patrick's Day? You know, let us know down below in the comments. And Whether we you cook something or yep. you have a tradition that you do. Yeah, Amy, Amy makes up the, the traditional, uh, corned beef and cabbage. Corned beef and cabbage. That's what we think is traditional. We, we had a, uh, uh, um, a student from our church and she was from Ireland. She was a missionary student and she's like, we don't do that. <laughs> so it's, it's kind like, of funny. Like, <laughs> have, an, have an actual Irish student. She's like, no, 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 we don't do that. <laughs> so that's just our view, but I'm, I'm a little bit of Irish. Amy's not. No, but, not at all. But we, we love no. having that, but, but we did, we've always celebrated it. Our kids. So I, I we had Lucky the Leprechaun, and we'll just kind of uh, like the Easter Bunny. Yeah, it, it, he was Lucky the Leprechaun in our household was bigger than Santa Claus. I mean, the kids just looked forward to St. Patrick's Day, you know, the the eve of St. Patrick's Day, and I would it was me, Lucky, because he was very mischievous. And he would just just trash the house, absolute chaos. So it was <laughs> a lot of work in the middle of the night. So I would go and I get all the all the shoes from the closets and put them down the stairs and mess up the kids' beds and draw in the mirrors with green. Milk. Everything was had to be green. Yeah, I dyed milk, dyed the milk green. I put uh, shamrock painted with dye in the bread in the toilet. So oh, lucky yeah. the leprechaun went went pee in the toilet and it was green and it, we had a lot of fun. But one of my we love being parents. Let yeah. me tell you, like yep. we we took full advantage of that. Our kids are adults, so now we don't have to do it. But it was a lot of fun <laughs> raising our kids and the the mischievous things. But one of the things that Lucky the Leprechaun did do, and it, it's my most memorable moment of our kids, is I took a green marker, and, and this took a long time on, on both of them. I went from bedroom to bedroom, and, and early in the morning, and I drew a green mustache on both Samantha and Alex and gave them little beards. And I remember the kids coming out of their bedrooms and like meeting in the middle and they're both laughing and pointing at each other and just had the, the absolute hysterical giggles. It was, it was a lot of fun. That's, that's my most vivid memory of our kids is lucky the leprechaun struck and, and they both <laughs> came out with green mustaches and, and, and beards and just laughing at each other that, that lucky drew on their faces. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah. But, but let's Talk about pests. Anyway, pests. So, uh, this is something that you find in our greenhouse is these sticky traps, and we use it to monitor uh, if we have any problems. So, one of the things that that is per prevalent, and it's 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 really it's across the board, are fungus gnats, and they're annoying. Uh, they can do damage. They're not they're not like an aphid or a thrip or you know where they can they can really do some damage. They're just annoying, and they I don't like them. Fly around a little bit. Yeah. So. What we, we use the sticky traps to catch them and to monitor them. And when they're adults, the best way is to catch them because they're very hard to kill it as adults. And again, with prevention, that's the best way because prevention will kill the eggs, but it doesn't, it doesn't kill that, uh, the adult life cycle. So the adult life cycle, we have to catch them and they're, they're kind of dumb. They go right, right to the yellow. And so you'll see so these. Is 
This is sticky. Yeah, and there's two sides. You show the other side. So there's a blue side to that. Like and Vanna White. <laughs> right. So the blue side, the, actually, the, I think the thrips are attracted to that side. Uh, so it's just something that we use in our greenhouses, and we just monitor, and uh, I like to be on top of it. Do you notice there's none on there right now? There's, there's none there. I, I have seen a few, so that's why I got these out right away. And uh, so just, just to catch them. And we do have, where to put my, my, I, my I stash? Oh, okay. So yeah, you yeah. can, you can use, you can use these at home. Uh, you know, if you have house plants, um, we have the, the right on our beatyourneighbor.com website, we have the, the classy casita. They're just little sticky traps. They're great to use in your, in your house plants. Uh, and they, they will catch those. You'll find them. And, uh, and the, the fungus nests, they're just, they're, they're out there naturally. They're, they're in that soil even. And it, it's very hard to, to kill them off. So but the best is, way. Here, hold on. The best way is catching them. Um, so this once is you a, have them. this is a paper. So you would pull this off. You can see the yellow. And then that is sticky. So they're, they're great to use in your household. And, but so that's how to kill, uh, how to catch them as adults. Again, prevention, use, use a systemic insecticide. So, and that's what we, we use a commercial grade of this and everything gets, yeah, about every two weeks I go through and it's a liquid form where this is a granular. But again, if you're, if you're at home and you have house plants, use a, use a systemic insecticide and so, that prevents, that will kill off that, that cycle of the eggs on. So the name kind of says what it is. It goes into the soil and it kills what's in the soil so that as it comes up through the stem, you know, they stop, they can't. It prevents produce. that, yeah. It, it prevents, prevents that cycle. But so, it prevents, you know, not just the fungus gnats, the, the, the aphids and uh, the, the bad bugs that would feed on that plant, um, that will kill that, kill them. So again, that kills that cycle. Maybe we could do a um, reel on what does an aphid look like compared to what does a white fly look right. like. Right, because we get a lot of questions on yeah, that. Yeah, we'll the show... aphids are, you know, normally on the stem and they look like little bumps, but they're actually all bugs. Oh, yeah, and they, that, they give you the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. And yeah. man, when you get an aphid out, outbreak, oh, it's it's bad. And we've, because they, we've seen, they multiply they, yeah, very a, quickly. A, an adult, and they're adults in like two days, and adults will give birth, live birth to 40 aphids every two days. And you can see how it just multiplies by the millions. And you know, we've, we've counseled with greenhouses that had yeah. aphid problems and a... We went to a school yeah, they, they, had they their called own up and they said, hey, we got something going on. We We're not something. quite sure. Can you just come up and give us some advice on this? And so we did. And he literally said, you need to destroy like, everything and time out. bleach the place. <laughs> like, it's like, done. You're not, you're not growing yeah. plants anymore. Now you're growing aphids. You have you have an aphid farm. You have 10 million aphids in here. Tomorrow there's going to be 40 million. So it, it needs to be now. And yeah, it, it was bad. I've seen bad. But so it's you know again prevention is key. Uh, using the systemic insecticide always, and we do that throughout the summer also on on our outside flowers because you'll go through those cycles of um, you have. You have the uh, well. The plants are outside, and it's good soil, so that everybody wants to lay their eggs in it. Yeah, it, you'll but you'll you'll kind of go through those cycles in like June. What uh, the uh, little Japanese beetles will come mm -hmm. out, and there's you know it's just you kind of like you go through that whole summer long, and you'll have different cycles. And again, it's like for us, we know prevention is key. We when we're we're religious about it, so that we don't have a problem. And no, it does not affect the pollinators. We're not we're not killing off the butterflies and hummingbirds or you know any of that. That's they're not affected by that. It's the bad bugs that actually. Uh, you know, they'll pierce, the pierce in or they'll, they'll, they'll drink, uh, the actual juice. They pierce in almost like a mosquito does. So prevention. And again, uh, you know, just for us in the greenhouses, this, especially this time of year, we want to stop it. If there's adults uh, flying around, the sticky traps work fantastic. Yeah. And you'll find, um, I know this is jumping way ahead, but when we get to the end of the season and we start talking about bringing plants inside or oh. house plants, if you put them outside during the summer and then you bring them inside, this is the same stuff that we recommend you treat them with like two weeks before you bring them in. Yeah, the house. for sure. Two weeks. Cause guess what? You're bringing that all yep. inside. So and the bugs are natural. So they're there. I mean, they, they're there. They really like the soil. Yeah. And just because you can't see them doesn't mean that they're not there. They're there. So yeah, yeah you do. Again, prevention is key. If you don't hear anything else, prevention, uh, that's, that will, 
help you out and make you a happy gardener uh, is when you don't have a problem because we've we've done this and we learned our lesson early on 17 years ago we were young and naive and, oh no oh, it's just extra money yeah, here oh yeah. no we want to do that yeah when it costs you yeah. when it costs you thousands and thousands of dollars uh to get get that back back under control you know in a greenhouse setting it's it's bad so that's that's called aging maybe we're getting a little bit wiser we're getting a little bit wiser <laughs> so anyway uh thanks for watching we'll be with you all this week and i don't know what we're talking about tomorrow we i don't know we're planting <laughs> plugs today and filling flats and we're going to do up some more eight inch baskets we've got um petunia wave petunias in yep we're going to plant and so the, those uh, work out fantastic make for it beautiful the eight inch, eight inch basket. basket yeah yeah yep, the um, easy waves once they get into the 12 inch they get kind of leggy like that but the eight inch baskets they feel really nice so we're going to plant up a bunch of those today but and... it's back to being cold here at least uh yeah, it's snow. you know it's, it's been such a weird winter winter i mean what a week ago we had 70 degrees in march mm -hmm. i mean that's just unheard of but you know we're, we had a little dusting of snow last night a little reminder it's march and uh it's everyone <laughs> itching to plant in this area and they're like when are you opening yeah. like well, no same as down. same as normal <laughs> yeah end of april may 1st you know that's that's when our normal yeah. time of opening is and that's when it'll, it'll be this year is yeah we get just constant messages and nothing changes for us it's always so excited she keeps bumping the camera <laughs> so we'll see you tomorrow thanks bye have